Hey everyone, welcome to the project. In this episode, I'm going to show you what I did to take this old Volkswagen chassis pan from rusted and gross and turn it into something more acceptable and refined like this. Completely clean and rust free. Using the same process, I'm going to show you how I took these chassis bits and pieces, cleaned them up, and turned them into something much more acceptable, like these. There, that looks better. So let's get started. The car in question is a 1971 Volkswagen Super Beetle. Once I picked up the car, I just started to take it apart. If there was a nut or a bolt, that I could undo. I undid it and eventually worked my way through the car until I was able to separate the top half from the bottom half. We're going to leave the top half for later and focus only on the bottom. So if you've ever worked on any of these Volkswagens you know that the pan is coated from the factory with a tar-like sound deadening material. And I found the best way to get rid of that was just a hammer and chisel and a lot of time. Then, once I got that clean, there was the issue of this, a sway bar bolt, which shouldn't be there. So, after I just hit it off with a hammer, I came up with a solution to fix the issue. Uh, drilled out a hole of where the bolt should thread in, then had my welder weld up a stack of nuts that I will then just put in where it's supposed to go, uh, tack it into place, and weld it up. From there, I'll also address the missing tow hook. There, just like that. And now that that's back fully functional, I'll just weld the cap back on the other side, off camera, and focus back on the floor pan. I tried various methods of cleaning off the paint and rust and dirt using wire wheels and stripper wheels, uh, everything I could think of, but none of it really seemed to work or be that effective or quick. So I did the only logical thing and decided to clean out the garage in anticipation of setting up this 10 by 17 portable car garage. There, that was easy. So the idea here is I wanted to make a sand blasting booth like that, perfect. And the idea behind this tarp was that I wanted to blast inside this tent and have all of the blast media fall back down towards the center where I could then sweep it back up, sift it through a screen, and reload it into the blaster and reuse it. Seems like a pretty foolproof idea. So, we started to blast, and for the most part, things went really well. Until this happened. Uh, apparently you need to have that valve all the way open when you're using this, or else it'll just uh, send sand all over the place inside the valve and until it blows itself through the side. But once we got that resolved, we were back on track and making progress. Things were going really well. Uh, the idea to have the tarp come down on the sides and catch the sand was working pretty well, although um, it did limit the amount of workspace and I'll eventually get rid of it, you'll see. Uh, the one thing that ended up taking a lot of time was this glue um, liquid nails and the leftover bits of this tar that I didn't get with the hammer and chisel. And I thought maybe it would go out faster with the sand blaster than to actually keep hammering and chiseling, but I think I was wrong. So if I were to do this over again, I'd just spend a little bit more time with the hammer and the chisel getting everything cleaned up real nice uh, before I went into sand blasting. Overall though, everything went really well and I'm pleased with the result. One thing that I noticed is that you can run the sand media through the machine, through the blaster, 
about two times uh, before the sand becomes too fine uh, like this and is just unbearable to work in these conditions. So after I let the dust settle, uh, I thought I would use this opportunity to clean up and I found myself having too little workspace with that tarp taking about, you know, one and a half to two feet off either side of the tent. Uh, so I thought I'm just gonna clean that tarp out and instead of having the tarp to funnel everything back down towards the center, which is nice, I'll end up just putting some tape uh, around the edges, keep it, try and keep the dust inside the tent and give me a little bit more workspace. I also thought I'd use this opportunity to maybe add uh, a little ventilation. So I got a furnace filter and on the back side of that, I just put a box fan in hopes of keeping some of the dust uh, down and out of my way. But I don't know if it really made a difference in the end or not. But once it was clean, it did allow me to get a few shots of me removing some of the paint. So check it out here.
So once I got a good system in place, I was able to make progress, finish up this pan, top and bottom, and was able to move on to some of the suspension and braking components. You can see here is a little before and after. I think they turned out pretty well and for the most part came out pretty clean. Yep, they came out looking pretty clean. With one exception, this guy. I almost didn't sandblast this part, but figured I'm doing it, so why not? Uh, this is a little cover that goes on the suspension on the rear torsion bar. And uh, once I started blasting, it uh, just sort of started to disintegrate. So unfortunately, I had to just buy this part new and replace these bad ones. And now with everything clean, I had to address some more repairs. The previous owner had drilled several holes in the bottom of the car. Uh, I don't know what for, but those need to be filled, as well as the two areas on either side of the back end of the floor pan where the old jacking mount was removed. I also needed to add a tube that would hold the heater adjustment cable. So, You get the idea. I did that a lot. Also, I found that this control arm had a little chunk taken out of it. So I welded that back up and cleaned it up. And at some point off camera, I also added the uh, heater cable tubes for the heater adjuster. So now inside this main center spine of the chassis, are a lot of tubes that hold cables for the accelerator and the clutch and your heater controls as well as your main gas line. I wanted to make sure that those were all cleaned out. So I got an old accelerator cable and some brake cleaner and just sprayed brake cleaner inside every one of those and pushed the cable through, um, put a little piece of tape on the end like you can see here and just started pushing it through all of the tubes one by one until all of the gunk had been cleared out from all the tubes. Spraying in brake cleaner, pushing through the gunk, spraying in brake cleaner and pushing through the gunk. The worst offender by far was this clutch cable line that I mentioned spraying in the brake cleaner and pushing through the junk. Gross. And then for good measure, I just gave all of the lines a generous blowing out with compressed air. This was actually a really messy process, and in hindsight, I should have done all of this before I even started to sandblast.
Once everything was all clean, prepped, and ready to go, I wanted to do just one last step before I started to paint, and that was treat all the metal with a rust converter in an attempt to just make sure if there was any rust that I missed anywhere on there that it would be addressed and would give me the best chance for success when I came time to paint. So I did that to all of the parts and I made this one mistake. You see, when I used the clean strip metal prep, per the instructions, you spray it on, let it sit for 15 to 30 minutes, rinse it off, dry it, and you're good to go. The issue that you have is when you spray it on more parts than you can rinse and dry in the space of 15 to 30 minutes. So what ended up happening was I sprayed it on, let it sit, and as I began to clean it up, it sat too long and started to rust. So you can see here, the new plan is to spray it on again, let it sit 10 to 15 minutes, spray it off with some soapy water, dry it immediately, and just go a section at a time rather than try and do it all at once. Once that was done and the directions were properly followed, the result was much better. The metal looked clean and etched and ready for paint and I knew that if there was any small rust bits in there that could have got missed in a crack or something like that, that they'd been hit with the rust converter and we would be good to go and ready to set up for paint. And from there I just hung up all of the parts that needed paint and tried to position everything in a way that I could spray it easily. Uh, the one big mistake I did make was I just put way too much stuff in this bay to paint at once. I had a hard time reaching all of the angles that I needed to get to and was constantly bumping into everything as I tried to paint something else. In the end though, it did turn out pretty well and now that I had primer on all of the parts, the next step was to put some seam sealer on the pan anywhere where there was a, a welded seam to keep moisture from getting from outside to inside. So remember how I just said that I was going to put on some seam sealer before I painted? Well, I did that. I just didn't take any video or pictures of it apparently. But you can see here, the plan of attack was to tape on either side of every seam, apply the seam sealer, and it's pretty messy, sticky stuff. So I highly recommend taping around the seams you want to put it on or I could see it really getting out of hand and getting all over the place. Then once you've applied the seam sealer, pull off the tape, let it dry, and paint. And obviously we're ahead of that at this point, so we'll just take a look at how the parts turned out. Uh, like I said, overall, the big mistake was that I just put too much stuff in the bay at once, but in the end, I made it work and I think it turned out pretty nice. And that's all for today, so next time we'll get started on actually putting some things back together. Thank you for watching.